I'll begin with a brief but interesting history on electrochemistry. This is really a story about two scientists, Luigi Galvani and Alessandro Volta, and it's a story about how experiments on frog legs ultimately led to the invention and discovery of the first battery. In the mid to late 1700s, scientists around the world were fascinated with doing experiments with lightning as a source of electricity. Ben Franklin's famous kite experiment happened in the early 1750s. In 1791, a scientific publication from Galvani appeared with this hand-drawn diagram. And this illustrates an experiment in which he used a lightning rod that was connected by wires, ultimately tied to this dissected frog body sitting on the table. And what Galvani observed was that when lightning struck the lightning rod, the frog legs would move. And this initial discovery sparked a series of experiments in which he tried to understand why those legs twitched. Galvani made a fascinating proposal about animal electricity. Ultimately, his proposal was strongly contested by Volta, and this sparked one of the greatest science debates in history. Galvani's next exciting discovery was that he could make the frog leg move without lightning. All he had to do was to use two different metals, like zinc and copper, where the zinc is connected to the spinal cord of the frog and the copper is connected to the muscle. And he discovered that when these two metals were placed in contact, then the frog leg would move. This was super exciting because it didn't require lightning. Galvani believed that this animation happened because of electricity and that the electricity is intrinsic to the animal body. And he believed that in his experiments, he was able to allow electricity to conduct from the spinal cord through the metals to the frog leg. And so he coined the term animal electricity. In 1799, Volta sought to disprove animal electricity. And he did so by making this contraption here, where he alternated two different metals. And in between the metals, he had a cloth that was soaked in a solution of metal salts. And he was able to show that the so-called voltaic pile was able to generate electricity just by using these two metals and salts and without the use of any animal parts. And this voltaic pile was the first battery ever invented. Volta's invention was just extraordinary. He was even invited by Napoleon to visit the French court in 1801. So here's Volta standing, explaining his voltaic pile. Even though Galvani's hypothesis of animal electricity turned out to be wrong, he still had a tremendous impact on this field. And the words galvanize and galvanism are in his honor. Galvani ultimately became the father of a new field called electrophysiology. Volta, on the other hand, became the father of the field of electrochemistry. And our units for voltage are in his honor, which is the volt. In this redox reaction, iron metal reacts with silver ion to form an iron plus two ion and silver metal. Remember that redox reactions can be split into two half reactions, oxidation and reduction. The oxidation half reaction loses electrons. So here, iron metal loses electrons to turn into iron plus two. The reduction gains electrons. So here, the silver ion gets reduced to silver metal. Now, the iron is considered a reducing agent because it reduces the other reactant, where silver plus is an oxidizing agent because it oxidizes the other reactant. This redox reaction, as written, is unbalanced. Even though we have good atom balance between the iron and the silver on both sides of the equation, the charge and the number of electrons is imbalanced. For instance, on the left side, we have a total charge of plus one, but on the right side, we have a total charge of plus two. 
One of the big take home messages of today's video is that oxidation numbers can reveal how many electrons are transferred. And this is important for the charge balance because it can determine the stoichiometry between the reducing agent and the oxidizing agent. So oxidation numbers for metal elements are zero. And then for these monatomic ions, they are the charge. So this would be plus one and plus two. So if we follow how many electrons are transferred for silver plus one to zero, silver zero, that's one electron. And from iron zero to iron plus two, that's a loss of two electrons. And so you can see that the amounts of electrons transferred are not equivalent. So we can also tackle this by formally taking this redox reaction and splitting it into two half reactions. So here, the iron metal with the iron plus two is a difference of two electrons. On the other hand, the silver plus one ion to silver metal is a gain of one electron. And in order to have these two equations sum to cancel out the electrons, we need to multiply the second equation by two so that it matches the number of electrons on both reactions. Here then, the two electrons can cancel out, and when we sum these two half reactions, what we get is a balanced redox reaction where we have iron metal reacting with two equivalents of silver ions to form these products. Here's a guide to balancing redox reactions. This is also called the half reaction method. In the first step, we're going to take the redox reaction and split it into the two half reactions, oxidation and reduction. And then we're going to individually treat these half reactions. In the second step, we're going to balance atoms ignoring all the protons and oxygens. In the third step, we're going to balance the oxygen atoms. And this is usually done by adding an oxygen source that's already present inside the reaction. Because these reactions happen in water, in acidic conditions, water would be the source of the oxygen. But if we're in a basic solution, hydroxide would be the source of the oxygen. Now we're going to balance the hydrogen atoms, and this is done by adding a hydrogen source or a net hydrogen equivalent. In acidic conditions, this is fairly straightforward because protons are present, and so that adds the needed hydrogen equivalent. In basic conditions, this is a little bit more difficult because protons are not present. So to add a net equivalent of a hydrogen atom, we're going to add water and hydroxide to different sides of the half reaction. And that's because the net difference of water and hydroxide is a proton. In the final steps, we're going to balance the charge by adding electrons. And then we're going to ensure that the number of electrons in each half reaction is made equal by multiplying an integer if needed. And lastly, we're going to sum these two half reactions so that the electrons will cancel out to give our overall balanced redox reaction. Let's go over two examples where we balance redox reactions in both the basic and acidic solution. Now the problem will specify whether it is basic or acidic. In Dick's example, for instance, it specified that it's basic. And we have a redox reaction between silver metal and zinc plus two ions. So before we begin balancing this redox reaction, I like to use the oxidation number analysis to see what the stoichiometry should be between these two metals. And so remember that for metal elements in their pure state, they would have an oxidation number of zero. So silver, zero, and zinc, zero. For this monatomic ion, the zinc has an oxidation number of plus two. So that just leaves silver oxide. And remember that oxygen typically has an oxidation number of minus two. And because there's two silver ions and silver oxide, that means then that each of these silvers would have a plus one charge so that the whole molecule silver oxide is charge neutral. 
So by focusing on these numbers, we can see that silver metal loses one electron, but zinc plus two ion gains two electrons. So this should indicate from the number of electrons that we need a two to one stoichiometry between silver and zinc. And so this is something we would expect to see in the overall balanced equation. So now moving into that guideline, the first step is to split this redox reaction into the two half reactions. On this side, we have the oxidation, and on the right side, we have the reduction. In the second step, we're going to balance all atoms, but ignoring oxygen and hydrogen. And because of the silver 2 oxide here, we're going to have to have a 2 in front of the silver on the left side. Now I'm going to continue just with the silver half reaction. In step three, we want to balance the oxygen atoms. And because this is a basic solution, the source of oxygen atoms will be hydroxide. And so we have one oxygen atom in the silver two oxide, and so we'll add one equivalent of hydroxide to the other side of the reaction. In the fourth step, we want to balance the protons. And here in a basic solution, we have to do that by adding a net proton through the addition of water and hydroxide. So from this earlier step, we can see that we need a proton on the right side. And so to the right side, we add water, and to the left side, we add hydroxide. Now, the hydroxide and water means a net gain of one proton for the right side of the reaction. So I can sum these additions to have two silver plus two hydroxide on the left side, silver oxide and water on the right. And the next step, we're going to balance charge. And so looking at this left side, the two hydroxides have a minus two charge. But so far on the right side, there is no charge. And so we can balance that by adding two electrons on the right side so that overall both sides have a total charge of minus two. Now that we've completed the oxidation half reactions, let's turn our focus to the reduction half reaction. So in the second step, we want to balance all atoms that are not oxygen or hydrogen. And here we already have a balance of the two zincs, so we can skip over step two. In the third and fourth step, we want to balance the oxygen atoms and the hydrogen atoms. And so far, there is none. So again, we can skip over step three and step four. And that brings us to step five, where we need to balance the charge. And we can do that by adding two electrons to the left side. So the plus two and the minus two cancel out to have a total charge of zero, which matches the total charge of zero on the right side. And now these two half reactions are atom and charge balanced. In the last step of balancing a redox reaction, we want to bring back together these two half reactions such that the electrons will cancel out. So because we have two electrons as products here and two electrons as reactant here, they naturally perfectly cancel out and then we can then sum the rest of the reactants and products to give this overall balanced redox reaction. So you do want to double check that we have atom balance between all the different atoms, silver, zinc, oxygen, and hydrogen. And you also want to check that the overall charge is also balanced on both sides of the equation. And one thing I just want to drive home is that if you pay attention to the coefficients between the silver and the zinc species, you'll notice that it's a two to one stoichiometry on both sides of the equation. And this was already predetermined by looking at the oxidation numbers. Oxidation numbers are a really useful and quick way to already guess at the stoichiometry that you need for electron balance. In this next example, we're going to balance a redox reaction where it's specified it happens inside an acidic solution. In this reaction, dichromate ion 
reacts with nitrous acid to form chromium plus three ion and nitrate. Now the centers of redox activity is the chromium and the nitrogen atoms. And so we're gonna perform a very quick oxidation number analysis so that we can figure out how many electrons are transferred between these two reagents. And ultimately, what that will tell us is the stoichiometry between chromium and nitrogen that we should see in the overall balanced reaction. With the oxidation number analysis, let's begin by putting in the oxidation numbers for common elements like oxygen and hydrogen. And so in all these species with oxygen, the oxygen has an oxidation number of minus two. In HNO2, the hydrogen has an oxidation number of plus one. Now we're going to be able to analyze the oxidation number for the central elements, chromium and nitrogen. And we want to do it such that all the oxidation numbers summed for all the atoms in every species will be equal to the overall charge of the molecule, whether it's two minus or minus or neutral. And so this will give us these oxidation numbers plus six for chromium and dichromate ion, plus three for nitrogen and nitrous acid, and plus five for nitrogen and nitrate. And again, for chromium plus three, the chromium just has the oxidation number of its charge. So now we can focus in on these redox centers. So chromium plus six has to gain three electrons to become chromium plus three. Nitrogen, on the other hand, needs to lose two electrons so that its oxidation number goes from plus three to plus five. So the chromium species have a net change of three electrons. The nitrogen species have a net change of two electrons. The least common factor between two and three is six. So six is ultimately the number of electrons that will have to be transferred in this reaction. And to get six electrons, that means we need a two to three stoichiometry between the chromium and nitrogen atoms. And so for chromium, because this is a net change of three electrons, if we multiply by two, that's how we can get six. For nitrogen, this is a net change of two electrons, and so if we multiply it by three, that's also how we can get the matching six value. In the first step, we're going to split this redox reaction into the two half reactions, the reduction and the oxidation. And I'm gonna focus first on the reduction half reaction. In the second step, we want to balance the chromium atoms, and we can do so by introducing the integer 2 here on the right side. In the third step, we're going to balance the oxygen atoms. In acidic solution, the source of oxygen atoms will be water. And because we have seven oxygen atoms on the left side, that means we need to add seven equivalents of water. In the fourth step, we're going to balance the protons. So now by introducing water, we've created 14 equivalents of hydrogen on the product side. And so to the reactant side, we're going to add 14 protons. And so now we have a good balance of all atoms, chromium, oxygen, and hydrogen. And we can proceed to the fifth step where we balance the charge. So here, looking at this earlier equation, we have two chromium plus threes, so that's a total of a plus six on the right side. On the left side, we have 14 protons and a two minus dichromate. So this together is 12 plus. And then the difference then would be that the left side has a surplus of six plus charge compared to the right side. And so to balance that, we can add six electrons to the left side. Now we can move over to the oxidation reaction. So in the second step, we would ignore hydrogen and oxygen and check for balance of the nitrogen. And indeed, there's one nitrogen on both sides, so we can skip step two. 
For step three, we want to balance the oxygen atoms, and we need to add one equivalent of an oxygen atom to the left side. And again, in acidic solution, the oxygen source is water. So we can add water such that both sides now have three oxygen atoms. Now we're going to balance the protons. And you can see we have three protons on the left, no protons on the right. So we can simply add three protons to the right side to balance the H atoms. And the last step here, we're going to balance the charge. And so we are neutral on the left side. And on the right side, we have a nitrate minus ion and three protons. So that overall, this is plus two. And so if we add two electrons, then both sides have a total charge of zero. In the final steps, we can now combine the two half reactions. Be mindful that we want the number of electrons to match so that they can cancel out. So you can see that the first equation has six electrons, but the second only has two. So that means we need to multiply the second equation by a factor of three. So rewriting the second equation here, where we've multiplied in a factor of three, we would get this bottom equation down here. And now we can see that the six electrons will perfectly cancel out with the six electrons of that first equation. So these will now just cancel out. And you'll also note that I've highlighted in color the fact that both of these equations have protons and water but on opposite sides of the reaction arrow. So that means then that we want to take their net difference. And so if we sum the products, take into account that 14 protons minus nine protons gives us a net of five protons on the left side, whereas we have a net four water molecules on the right side. And this is now our overall balanced equation. So again, I wanna emphasize that the stoichiometry between chromium and nitrogen is two to three on both sides of this equation. And again, this was already predetermined by doing our very quick oxidation number analysis at the very beginning. So to drive that message home again, oxidation numbers are a quick and helpful way to determine the stoichiometry you need for electron balance.